And boy, have we developed a great society that's for that. Because the society we live in is all about developing the false self. Watch the media, watch advertisement, look at magazines. Read, read people's Facebook. It's all about this false self. And the bigger the gap, the more pain. And the more pain, the more intense we have to become at numbing it. So what are some of the ways that we try to numb it? I don't know. <laughs> and you know what we're numbing? Is the lost connection to our true, real, and authentic self. And then we've got to occupy it. And boy, have they been waiting for us. <laughs> Any technology is about being externally focused. Focus on that. Gotta make sure they have the keyboard. And then, we, we, then not only being focused, we don't want you to hear anything. <laughs> and we keep buying and buying and buying and feeding the source. <laughs> then there's always to keep it occupied and make sure that it's numb and not focused on that, we come up with sports. <laughs> we can travel. Anything not to be focused. <laughs> then, let's see, what else? I oh, yeah. feeling of being connected. I'm hungry right now. We, we can read about giving. <laughs> we can learn how to sell to an idiot. <laughs> we can learn about how to be real in a relationship. <laughs> we can read about spirituality. We can learn about reconnecting to our inner child. <laughs> we can learn about how to be successful in business. We can learn about how to be prosperous. We can just be downright numb, John Sanford. Or we can be a part of a purpose-driven church. We can learn how to cure our alcoholism and addictions. <laughs> and then when all else fails, we can just go shopping. Yay! Yay. 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 That's good, all right. And the more that we heap on, the greater the disconnect to our true, real, and authentic self. And pretty soon, most of us are living don't know that we have something greater inside of us. Now the uncovering, the unreconnecting to that true, real, and authentic self is one of the most powerful opportunities and processes that we go through. But what most of us think is that we can just do it once and it's over. As John Bradshaw says, reclaiming our inner child, our divine self, our higher self, our greater self, it is not an event. It's a process. It's a process. And closing up this gap is, one, is the most courageous journey you will ever make in your life. And why is it needed? If you're wondering for one moment that it needs to be done in our world, you haven't been paying attention to the last week what happened eight days, nine days ago in Maple Ridge. Of that little girl, 16 years old, given a drug at a party and then raped and people taking pictures of it and then posting it on Facebook and on Blackberries and phones. Because why? We're so disconnected. Our kids at 14 and 16 years old can watch a girl being raped, take pictures of it, and not think there's anything wrong with posting it. You see, when we're coming from our true, real, and authentic self, when we see somebody struggling and hurt, we help them. We do something about it. At first, I was really mad when I heard about that story, but more than anything, just deeply touched and saddened that this is what is coming of our society. 
And what set, first set me was who I wanted to be the first, the most upset with and mad, and then under it just disappointed and sad and frustrated. All those emotions that come up when these events happen was that the people filming it. But you know then, as I was meditating this morning, I want to go back one step to the parents of those kids filming it. What kind of an environment were they coming from in their home? The environment as dysfunctional as mine was. At 16, had that have been happening to another girl, I would have known to do something. So what is our generational consciousness creating? A huge gap between these two. That we are so disconnected to our emotions, to our feelings, through the media, through our video game playing, through our technology, of just being focused on everything else outside of ourselves but our divine, higher, true self. This gap here is so tough to close up because you know why? It hurts. It has hurt every moment that we have lived outside of our true, real, and authentic self. It has hurt. And you know how we process hurt? We can't read about it. You can't understand it and make it go away. You can't close this gap up by doing something other than going through the emotions of it. That's the only way. I can sit over here and do all the yoga, meditate, read, shop, do everything, go to lectures, go to church. I can do all those things. It doesn't close this gap up. When Tawny or Liberty feel emotion, feel disappointment, feel hurt. You know what they do immediately? They cry. You know what we do? Nothing. We sit, hold it inside and hold it and hold it and hold it. And then we wonder why we get cancer. Why our relationships are toxic. Why we can't get close to anyone. If you can't get close to your own emotions, how can somebody get close to you? So here we sit, as a spiritual community, are we ready to start closing this gap up? Because you see, what I'm used to being in a relationship with is people that don't want to close up this gap. My dad, do you think he ever bothered once to sit me down and say, I love you, son, you're so precious, I'm so proud of you, let me hold you? Still, 50 years later, it hurts. Because he couldn't make the cross of the great divide that I didn't know was there. And I thought if I was just good enough, just loving enough, just kind enough, just a good enough athlete. I was a heck of an athlete. Just good enough that somehow I could close that gap up. And all that had happened was nothing. I could never be good enough for him. And if I'm not making sense to you today, I don't know what to do to break through. We're right here and we need to open ourselves up or our society's technology is going to be so far ahead of our humanity that we're going to get so disconnected as a heart at a human level around our globe that these scenes will continue on and get worse and worse and worse because we're numbing to them. Because we have numbed out our deep emotions and our unwillingness to do our grief work. Do you know that it takes a huge amount of self-esteem and being confident in yourself to want to close this up? Most of us have so little self-esteem at times that we're afraid that if we ever get in, con in, in, in connection with our emotions and our hurt and our grief work and our sadness and our disappointment and our just downright how much it hurt not to be held or touched or loved or appreciated, that we won't do the work. So where are we in our life? What I've been about my whole, my whole adult life is helping people close this gap up. So I create the center here. I spent 14 years doing a workshop around the country helping people close this gap up. I spent 28 years, 28 years of age, I started helping people close this gap. I teach classes, I counsel, everything. And I'm in a community that is not responding. And I don't understand why. So I have set up a dysfunctional community, a symbiotic relationship that is not being mutual to me.